As we slowly trundle on into an ever-changing future, you'd be forgiven for thinking that things are getting worse over time rather than better, despite the human race never having it so good. We have computers that can do everything, and small enough to fit in your pocket. We have modern drugs with the capability to completely wipe out all types of diseases, and we live in the most all-inclusive, accepting time on record. But like any happy ending worth having, it comes, but at a cost. And yes, that is the most subtle dirty joke I've ever done. But yes, all these lovely things I mentioned do come at a cost. Phones connect everyone, which usually means being added on Facebook by some of those people you went to school with who you wouldn't share a room with much less a conversation. Modern drugs haven't wiped out any diseases because your aunt won't stop believing in conspiracy theories she finds on the web when she drinks alone in the evening to help put a band-aid on the whole of lover's neglect only 20 years of marriage can manifest. And while giving everybody a safe space is good on paper, it makes people look for problems where there isn't any and demonise and attack anyone or anything at full velocity even if their grievance is as sturdy as your granddad's love pump. Get that image out of your head. So in today's video I'm going to take another swing at the plums of outrage culture. This time I'm going to be talking about boycott and cancel culture. Why it's a problem and what can realistically be done about it. Let's begin. So just a brief rundown on what boycott or cancel culture is for those of you who haven't a clue what this talking green duck is on about. Boycott culture is when a company or organisation says or does something, or in some cases doesn't do anything, and a group of social justice warriors grab their pitchfork and diapers, assemble a seasoned, loyal and ruthless army willing to kick it for the cause and heroically not do anything. I mean, they do something by not doing something, which is just lazy. They threaten to boycott the company, not pay for their servers, buy their items, or in some cases destroy an item from that company that they bought and own. Weirdly oblivious that that's how you hurt your own circumstances and not how you hurt the income of a company. But I'm not going to be the one to correct them because these days it's rare to find somebody stupid enough to serve up their own karma and it makes me giggle. Also, I don't think most of these people who boycott these companies ever or would ever be a customer to these places anyway. I am boycotting Google. Gucci. Bitch, you couldn't afford Gucci. How is it you think continuing not to buy things from them is going to hurt them more than before? You need to boycott within your financial range. And that's Ducky's daily advice. An example of boycott culture would be in the summer of 2018, Peter Alexander Clodenline released a kid's sweatshirt with the phrase boys will be boys on it. And a select group of people lost their minds, calling it sexist and how men should be held accountable for their actions and a load of other. I'm saying this with such gumption and fury in hopes that my outrage will distract you from the fact I'm commenting on a slogan of a kid's pyjama top. And other wankery. And threatened to boycott Peter Alexander until they pulled the shirt. That's pretty much what boycott. Uh, boy culture. That's pretty much what boycott culture is. Cancel culture is the same, but with people as the target rather than companies. So comedians, actors, or anybody really in the public eye with enough of a following to get a raised eyebrow. When they say or do things regardless of if it was intended as a joke, or how long ago it was, or just a news media purposely taking what was said out of context for a flashy headline designed to spark outrage. But instead of a boycott, the soft Jew willies, yes I'm going to do that every time I have to say SJW for the rest of the video, because I suspect if I keep saying the words scrotum juice warts, YouTube will take away ads on this video, which I don't want because it's probably going to be a bit of a long one, and I have those shoeless jockey wrestlers to thank for that too. They try to have the people outright cancelled by tweeting at their studios, tweeting at advertisers who support them, hitting up the venue they're playing at, and starting nonsense petitions to make it look like more people care than actually do. An example of cancelled culture would be when James Gunn, the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, was fired by Disney after some decided to get offended by some dark jokes he tweeted out about seven years ago. We'll touch on that later. So that's pretty much what it is. So why do people get up in arms over such non-issues? Fuck if I know. It's hard to see things from their point of view and see where they're coming from without killing enough of my own brain cells to successfully rebrand my channel as Sergeant Downs. But if I was a betting man, I'd put my money on one of the following. Boredom. Yep, yeah, if somebody's bored enough for long enough, they'll eventually jump at the idea to fight for something regardless of how ridiculous it is. I reckon a lot of these people care more about finally having something to do than they do about the actual issue they back. That's why saucepan juggling witches can rarely be reasoned with. You're not talking sense into them. You're fighting to take away their new hobby. Recognition. Who doesn't want a bit of recognition. I certainly wouldn't be talking to you right now if I didn't want some level of the spotlight on me. But not too much, obviously. I'm an extremely attractive man, you see. And the last thing I want is to be tracked down and have to spray you ladies down with a hose every morning and I find you sucking on my windows. But I'd consider my own pursuit of recognition a bit more healthy and add something to the world if I can make people laugh and forget their problems for five minutes. But have you seen the people who get outraged? They look like goddamn peacocks. I wouldn't trust them to give me directions, much less advice on what is or isn't offensive. You can be sure they spend every waking moment trying 
going to be noticed by everyone. Absolute attention whores. This is why these people only lose their shit online. Because if they were to meet up in real life and do a proper protest, they'd quickly realise they've been following the commands of absolute mental cases who think hair colour is a replacement for a personality. And lastly, and the one that can't be discounted, good old stupidity. This covers pretty much anything I haven't touched on already, from people wanting to have a cause to fight for to feel like they're the good guys, to how people are so easily talked into being outraged to begin with. Virtually all sizable judgmental whales are cursed with some level of intellectual impairment. And they don't even know they're stupid. The only one of them who really deserves any credit for brains is the person who knew they'd get clicks by purposely misquoting somebody or calling racism on nothing because they knew stupid people would follow them like cross-eyed lemmings. So why do I think that these sexy Japanese wheelchairs calling for people to be cancelled and boycotting companies is a problem? It's a problem because for some mental reason, it works. People are made apologise for jokes. They're made apologise for homophobic things they said 10 years ago. Producers and networks decide to pull shows out of fear of more outrage and companies meet the demands of these noblings. That's my new term for knob goblings. Yes, you can use it. Like that thing I mentioned earlier about James Gunn. So seven years ago on Twitter, he posted a few dark jokes about about struggle snuggles. Were they good jokes? Not really. I have a very dark sense of humour, so I do appreciate a good dark joke. I just thought they were a bit shit. But they were clearly an attempt at humour nonetheless. Now, some clever outrage mongers decided to dig up these old tweets and see how many idiots would run with it. Turns out, enough idiots to make Disney fire him. Granted, they eventually hired him back after pressure from people and the cast themselves after they made a stand. Personally, I think that the outrage just got a bit too cocky and overextended themselves attacking the Marvel fan base, which you just don't do. Be like the Vatican City declaring war on the US. But this case is an outlier. How many times were people never hired back? And that's why it's a problem. You now have idiots and salty jizz windows beginning to control what you and me are and aren't allowed to see, do or partake in. And they laugh in the face of rational people like me or you because they can always use the words because I'm offended as a plaster on any hole in their argument. Why does being offended even matter? You're offended, so fucking what? Is everyone you know and love irrefutably damaged? No. Are you permanently disfigured ensuring the rest of your life will be a struggle to the bitter end. No. So build a bridge and get over it to fuck. Someone complaining about this crap is the equivalent of somebody looking for six months off work because you pinched them. Yes, the world is full of people. Yes, a lot of those people you won't like. And yes, they will say things you won't agree with. But the world and everyone in it shouldn't have to change because you decided you wanted to have the emotional defence of a wet paper bag. You're the problem. You're the one everyone hates. And you're the one acting like a child. You need to start behaving like an adult or sit down and shut the fuck up. Okay, I kind of went off on one there a little bit, so let me end this video with something a bit more useful than a rant to help you gorgeous lads and ladies deal with these strawberry jam waffles on your travels and hopefully help solve this issue in the long run. How you deal with these people is you make fun of them. Simple as that. Don't argue. Don't name call. Don't rise to the challenge. Just laugh at them. Make a joke at their expense. We humans are social creatures. We do our best not to be embarrassed where and when we can. We don't get embarrassed when somebody is arguing with us. We argue back. We don't get embarrassed when somebody punches us. We punch them back. We do, however, get embarrassed when we're the butt of a joke and people are laughing at us. It gets us looking inwards rather than lashing outwards. It's a very different type of thing going from people are mad at me for being offended to people are laughing at me for being offended. And I'd argue it's a stance I've seen a glimpse of been taken by Hollywood themselves to help battle this poisonous culture. Just take a look at this scene from the new Spider-Man flick. You look really pretty. And therefore I have value. No, no, that's not I'm right. messing with you. <laughs> you look pretty too. Just a bit of a playful jab at those who caught up in political correctness, going from a, oh shit, she's one of them, to the reveal of, oh, she's just fucking with me. She's not actually a mental case. It's not perfect and I'm sure my logic has holes in it, but it certainly gives me hope for the future and I'll be happy to see more of that. <laughs> So that's it. I want to thank you lovely lads and ladies for tuning in and listening to me talk shite for a bit. Why not tell me in the comments below what in 2019 has angered you so far in the world of outrage culture? Or better yet, try to predict what will be next. I do try to be pretty active in the comments, so any questions or queries you can post them below too. If you enjoyed this video, consider sharing it with your friends and enemies. I know you've been neglecting that share button, and it's just not fair. That button has needs too, and it's not all about your enjoyment. And if you're not careful, one day that button will leave you and find somebody else to push it, and they'll probably have a bigger finger than you and push it a lot harder than you ever did. You don't want that do you? You don't want somebody else pushing your share button? I didn't think so. Thanks for liking and subscribing and I will catch you lads and ladies in the next one. <laughs>